Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase progress report. We're on week 31 of 2021 and if you're new here I bring the latest news and updates of everything Starbase every Monday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out. Now let's get to it. We finally have our first post launch progress report this week. I hope you guys and gals have been enjoying Starbase as much as I have and checking out all it has to offer. If you haven't seen yet, I've had a few handy videos released with day one tips, installing iSAN, going over the tech tree as well as an introduction video to the spaceship designer. And there's lots more coming too, thanks to the continued support from my YouTube members and DonorBox subscribers. Huge thanks again to anyone that signs up, links in the description. Now let's dive into some Lowry quotes of the week and we're going to start you off with just a little bit of a fail from Lowry this time around. Last Friday, a good week after launch, Lowry realised that they had forgotten to enable company owned ships, even though the feature is ready. So on behalf of all the companies out there, I can only say this. Please tell me you were joking Lowry. Please. Next up, Larry answered a bunch of questions, but firstly asked that all bugs be sent to them via the F1 tool in game, and they will get them fixed. After being asked for a parts list and not just an all list in the spaceship designer, Larry says a shopping list feature is under work. Currently, the only workaround for this to see how many objects you need is to at least have one of everything in your station inventory before you buy a ship. Despite lowering research points for unlocks in the tree, people are still complaining about crafting taking too long. But Larry says that the next update will speed it up significantly, so expect that this week. Larry was then asked if the 10,000 items is the limit for station storage, which Larry replies that it is. So there you have it, 10k is the limit for the storage at Origin stations. Larry then explains the reductions in station buy prices doesn't affect the ship designer fees, because it's a crafting fee and not a buy fee. So you can save a lot on ship shop and ship designer purchase ships simply by crafting the components needed yourself. Just a quick note on that one though, if you're having trouble buying ships with parts, turn off batteries and cooling cells. I found this will sometimes sort out a lot of the buying problems. We've got a little bit of a double whammy quote from both Discord and the forums with this one. Larry says, the crafting and research tree took a big hit from factory area issues, since this area would have made all own station crafting more viable, and they are working on that issue too. I'm not sure what Larry thinks these factory areas do, but it would have had to have been magic, since dropping the tables in space works just as well for crafting on your station. Larry left us for a few days to ponder the mystical nature of the factory area, before returning to the issue, but this time on a forum post, for which he apologises for the poor balance with the research tree. They have made several fixes and three times faster crafting speed is coming soon. He goes on to say where it went wrong was that he made bad assumptions about players, such as players using trading or the ship designer instead of going for the completionist route. He continues that two massive bugs contributed to the initial failure of the research tree, as the entire system was designed to work around players doing max size easy build ships, which was impossible with the bugs. Hold up, what on earth were you thinking? I get putting easy build mode in to help out new players, that's fair, but to design the entire tech tree and progression around a feature that a large majority of closed alpha players didn't want or like in the first place sounds a bit tone deaf and out of tune with the player base. But let's continue, and during that process establish their own stations, and while the stations worked, the factory halls do not. Oh man, I could not imagine the transponder hell we would have if every single player was making a station. That would just be a nightmare. Larry says the easy research plan was that players establish station in the safe zone border inside the belt, and thus speed up the hauling process then working factories that could produce not only the station parts, which give 800 red research points per stack of Valkyte, but all kinds of machinery which they could use to build an asteroid mining factory. Is it me, or have I missed an entire section of the game where all these factory devices exist? As we have very few of them to begin with. But let's assume they did, and you go and make a buttload of stuff. It's still stuck out there at the station. A tiny 100 meter cube of a station with no way to transport it and sell the thousands of items that you would have made. Because even with the nerfs, it is literally tens of thousands of objects to get all the points you need to unlock stuff. Way more than your station inventory can take. Now I won't continue reading this post as it is quite long already, so pause the video now or check the forum if you want to read the rest of his reply. 
But I will say this, it was not just one bad assumption, it was many overlapping ones. Having three brand new and untested systems in stations, crafting and easy build mode all tie into each other and not expect it to all go horribly wrong is a big couple just by itself. Jumping onto the next quote now, Larry answers the question of if stations will get bigger than the small 108 meter cube that we have now. He replies station volume will allow the larger build area once they have done it. And this really confuses me how stations have ended up like this. We had awesome large origin style and scale stations that were possible in closed alpha. Yes they were bugged too and they didn't have much more than just landing pads or lot areas to build but they could be big at least. What we have now is a huge step down both in size and features to the point where all the station is is simply a storage hole. Both where stations are currently at and this answer from Lowry is very concerning for me. Building large stations together with friends was a major feature touted on the roadmap and the image even showed the old landing pad too. With this small station area you can fill it out in about two hours by yourself. It doesn't take much doing and is hardly worth marking as complete in the roadmap. I really hope Frozen Bike can turn this one around, or we're going to be seeing not only this month's capital ships being pushed back already, but players dropping off as well. I'm really hopeful however that this new style will create more aesthetically pleasing and more varied systems than the previous system. So silver linings and all that. But enough of the negativity, let's have some positive news. While answering a question about respawning, Larry also confirmed that player stations will get a ship designer of their own. This is key for being able to move away from Origin on a more permanent basis and no longer be tied to Origin for more ships. Our final quote for today is something I see a lot of people asking so I wanted to mention it here as Larry had recently answered this question too. And that question is if the asteroids respawn. Larry tells us the asteroids that are out there won't spawn back and they would deplete accurately. But in extreme emergencies they can reset areas, but that's not in sight at the moment. Now don't go anywhere and let's dive into this week's progress report. The main design features worked on last week were rare ores popping out in locations where they should not has been fixed. Yumrium not being collectible via the mining backpack or ore collector has been fixed. Work on resolving issues with easy build mode continues. Moonbase building has been tested and more building features have been designed and configuring moon mining for different tools, devices and explosives is underway. Now onto the gameplay updates, issues with easy build mode module snapping have been investigated, issues with safe zones not initialized for newly created stations has been fixed, work around for the module handle duplication has been worked on, work on adding module creation to easy build mode start for ships that have lost their module references continues. A fix for spawning a ship and entering easy build mode causing two ships to be in the area and causing problems has been started. And station servers have been optimized, limited the number of visible player stations in densely populated areas. Our UI updates, our factory halls tutorial design has been worked on. New insurance transfer setup tutorial design has also been worked on. Confirmation pop up for the cell all operation for the cell terminal was designed. And oh boy that one's been a long time coming. And lastly a fix for ghost items appearing when picking up items too fast has been worked on. Over in designer updates we have snapping has been fixed for bottleneck 4 curved module. The module should now allow placing curved basic module on both sides. Two modules which could cause durability issues have been updated. L shaped basic corner and corner 1 or crate. Automatic thruster renaming pre-named thrusters from pre-made ships causing them to get stuck in the easy build mode has been fixed. And a fix for automatic thruster renaming working outside easy build mode has been made. And lastly other updates this week are work on melee related animations continues, area for bolts has been increased on the advanced crafting bench, or tower holograms have been adjusted slightly for better alignment to the resource ports. A typo in Dynastar ship shop logo has been fixed, minor LOD and hologram updates done in stations, and spawning dust particles increased when moving in space. Now there's no feature video this week, but you can send any funny or awesome clips and recordings my way for a chance to be featured on the channel. Feel free to contact me via Discord or come jump on my Discord server, which is also home to my faction, the Kbots. As always, please smash that like button, share this video with your friends and faction, leave a comment with any questions you want answers to, and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.